Let us then prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. The Lord is near. Let us replace fear and worry with prayer and peace. Let us stand firm in the Lord. Please join me in the opening prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Renew your whole creation, nature and grace, soul and body, and all manner of matter. Move in and around us and fill us with your creative energy and extravagant light. May our hearts be open, may our hearts be stirred for the work of love to which you call us and the hope of the world for which we labor. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We continue our journey through the book of Philippians. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible. And Paul goes on to say, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Yodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have received your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Here ends the reading of Holy Scripture. May the Holy Spirit lead us where it will. Every now and then, we all need a good cheerleader. We need that someone special to remind us of who we are and to give us that extra little impetus to push on, persevere. Sometimes we even need that someone to hold a carrot out in front of our nose or someone to shed some light on what can be sometimes an uncertain path and sometimes even give our unsure soul a bit of reassurance or give us point blank a shove into the world although it is filled with fear about the future. Paul is the number one cheerleader for the Christians at Philippi and for the movement of Christianity. For Paul, the Philippians are all the proof that he needs to remind him that he was not running this race in vain. 
The church in Philippi was his main reason for rejoicing. The very thought of them filled him with inexplicable joy. Inexplicable joy. I think they were Paul's favorite church. And so Paul reminds them to be the best they could be. And that reminded me of the army. Be all you can be. Maybe, maybe we can adopt that in the church. Be all you can be. But Paul's expression of faith and his joy found in the Philippian church is also filled with passion as he tells them to rejoice in the Lord always. I tell you, rejoice. Paul is passionate about his faith. And he wants this kind of passionate faith for his brothers and sisters in the church at Philippi. He wants them to show that in their everyday lives. Paul knows these people well. And he appeals to them as friends, as fellow Christians, and as proud, respectable citizens of an important community. And when he admonishes them, he does it out of his deep love for them, because that's what you do when you truly care for someone. These are the Christians that give Paul hope, that fill Paul's heart with joy at the very thought of them and their faith. And so he says, stand firm in the Lord in this way. In Philippi, there were women, some of them visible and active leaders of that first church. A wealthy woman, Yodias, was one of Paul's first converts in Philippi. Her home became that meeting place for the first Christians in her community. And her leadership and support for the church within this faith community remained strong and solid and constant. Another woman, Syntyche, also worked with Yodius in the Philippian church. Together they worked side by side, and many people came to believe the message and the mission of Christ through their continued efforts. But these two women seem to be in a disagreement at this particular point in time, and Paul urges them to be of the same mind. Paul admonishes them and tells them there is no excuse to remain angry with one another. Because Paul does not hold one higher than the other. He places both of them on equal footing, just as Jesus would have done. And hopes for the best. And hopeful that his message will take root in their lives. He isn't telling them that they must think alike. But what he does tell them, and he tells us today, is that we are to be Christ-like in our ways of living and thinking. Paul plants the seed of Christ's love in the lives of these two very important women. And he prays in faith that it will take root, that it will thrive in God's great love for all humankind. In this, Paul calls us to pay attention to our ways of thinking. The choices that we make regarding what we will allow to take up space in our mind. So I think we need to pause for a moment every now and then to discover or to think about what those thoughts we are going to own and which thoughts we could detach ourselves from. Our human nature can be very self-serving. And we may prefer to hold on to the thoughts that stroke our egos. That's, yeah, those are good. But what we especially need to be careful to hold on to are those thoughts that give us strength. Those thoughts that bring hope alive in our heart. Those thoughts that give us the impetus to persevere on. There are three types of relationships that we work on in our lives. 
And each one of them is important in keeping us healthy. However, these types of relationships point us in three different directions. First of all, there are relationships that are purely social. They are the day-to-day experience of living in the world with others. Second, we exist in a relationship within ourselves. It's how we relate to our inner self. It's that person we are when no one is looking. Finally, there's the relationship that we have with God. And it's how we meet God in our everyday life. And I think that's what Paul is calling us to pay attention to as we go about our daily routines and living life. But we live in such a hurried and instant world. And that can create a lot of confusion. And in confusion, worry and anxiety begin to flood over our mind and our our heart, and it spills over into our soul. And if unchecked, it can come to dominate us, and it causes then fear to be born within us. And worry and anxiety can spiral out of control very easily. It is actually paralyzing especially if we focus all that energy on our own concerns and our own selves. Just notice the times when worry begins to dominate your mind. And we will never be removed from it as being human. It's just part and parcel of being human. But perhaps we could use worry more constructively and in a more positive way our anxiety and our worry is focused constructively, it just might open the door to prayer. Paul says, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Paul is telling us that the peace of God will flood, wash over our heart. So in the face of all that seeks to destroy us, Paul preaches, rejoice. Paul was full of joy because he knew that no matter what happened to him, Jesus was always right there beside him. And so Paul can teach us an important lesson today. That our inner attitudes do not have to reflect our outward circumstances. Worry, fear, anxiety, the very sludge of life. And if that's allowed to accumulate, it will eventually cloud our vision and make it impossible to see beyond our own little realm of concerns and needs. And this is what keeps us from experiencing the presence of God in our lives. When we simply allow worry, fear, and anxiety to dominate our minds and our hearts, it crowds God out. There's no room left for God to be. So Paul invites us to pray. And he tells us that the peace which surpasses all understanding will begin to infiltrate the deepest parts of our being if we allow it to do so. But this peace that Paul talks of does not come through the absence of hard times. And we know that from the experiences Paul was having in prison. The peace Paul speaks of is given to those who pray without ceasing, and it's found in that true, authentic, constant relationship with God. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, 
whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The freedom that we are given to choose empowers us as human beings to choose what we think is true and honorable and just and pure and pleasing and commendable. But Paul suggests that we choose with the mind of Christ and to perceive what God may be doing with us in this very moment. And the answer, the answer is found in a dialogue within a relationship with God who speaks to us through the scriptures, through our daily devotions, through prayer, or in the quiet stillness. Be still and know that I am God. From the movie Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks portrays a man that has an IQ of 75. Yet he manages to become involved in several major accomplishments between the years of 1950 and 1980. And the famous line is, my mama says life is a box of chocolates and you never know what you're going to get until you bite into it. In this movie, we see a man who overcomes and survives all the events of his life wearing the belt of truth and honesty. Gump was able to keep his focus on the goal. He was always focused on that ultimate treasure. So what are we doing? Are we storing up real treasure? Are we living our lives with the treasure or the goal always in our sight. Life brings us many diverse and difficult challenges. But in those times, we must turn to trust in the stronghold of our lives. It's the treasure that we are building up to and the ultimate goal that we persevere to reach. May we be able to rejoice in a true relationship with God, the one that will provide us with strength and courage and ultimately bring us God's peace. May we be able to rejoice in keeping our mind's eye on the treasure of our lives. May we be consumed with our crown and joy. The Creator, the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit. Rejoice in the Lord always, I say. Rejoice. And thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, our crown of joy. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and love. You are with us in every circumstance of this life. And knowing that, we give thanks for your steadfast faithfulness. We give thanks for the gift of your peace that comes to us even in times of fear and uncertainty, trouble and doubt. We give thanks for your powerful arms of mercy that are always there for us to grab hold of when we are sinking. We put our trust in you, for you alone can save us. We pray for your power and your love that would overwhelm 
the uncertainty, the fear, the anxiety. In places where there is unrest and uncertainty, send your all-encompassing shalom to restore and repair all that is torn and broken. We pray that all the violence will be defeated by all the goodness. Grant us faith and courage to follow Jesus more closely. Where love casts out all fear. We entrust to your providential care all those who suffer, all those who are hiding, all those who find themselves unworthy in the face of fear or anxiety. To those struggling with doubt, increase our faith. To those enduring persecution or prejudice, bring freedom. For those caught in the grip of anxiety and uncertainty, grant the calm rest that your peace alone gives. For all who face illness, pain, or even death, we pray for your unending shalom and full restoration of wholeness to fill them in heart, mind, and body. We give thanks for those moments of celebration in our Remember all the farmers. We remember Alex and Joe and Danielle, and Dana and Dale, Keith and Harleen, Dan and Cheryl, Helen and Mary Lynn, Jeanette and Joy, Rosella and Herb, Nick, Don and Phil, Bill and Betty. Pray for our country. We pray for the family and friends of Ardith. We pray for the family and friends of Laverne. And those who are in care, Irene and Lois, and Joyce, Shirley and Bev. And those who serve our country without reservation, Jason, Robert, Abigail, Aubrey, Matt, Rose, Madison, Connor, Utana. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for these people and those persons and concerns that rest in the depths of our heart. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
good to hear you again, Scott. Thank you. We offer our gifts as we arrive at church and as we leave from church. So let us together say the prayer of dedication. Please rise as you're able. Praise you, O God of joyful giving. Praise you for all you have made and given, that we might have life and have it abundantly. You did not guard your sovereignty, but risked it in covenant with the world. You did not treasure your own self-sufficiency, but emptied yourself in your Son, that we might have eternal joy and peace. Help us to be more like you, and open ourselves to joyful gratitude and extravagant generosity, and magnify our gifts, that they might bring our neighbors and us closer to you. Amen. Now may we go, knowing that we are embraced by the love of God, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we are blessed by Jesus to go out into this world to offer healing and hope. So go now in peace. Let all God's people say, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.